There's the laser going. Little electro lab. That's where the electronics live. Welcome! We're in the rainforest in Costa Rica at La Selva uh, Biological Station, field station out here. And we're teaching a course and we brought a couple laser cutters out here. Got two laser cutters in the jungle. So there it is, cutting this heavier duty MDF. Cutting through pretty nice. Here was, we couldn't bring really big heavy duty laser cutters. Um, so we wanted to bring some of these smaller, cheaper ones and kind of do a little review. Cause we can get these all the way out here. We have to cross a jungle bridge to get out here. Oh what? Oh yeah. <laughs> So this is the Atom Stack X7 Pro, and then the one we're looking at a lot is the Afero Laser 2. Uh, and they sent us this laser to test out, and so we're kind of giving it the rundown, seeing how it works. Are for calibrating this machine, and in this one, this little guy is also for calibration of this machine. So. Please, 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 don't you leave. We built it here and we're testing it on different types of materials and how powerful it is. We were able to cut MDF with about three passes. And so all these laser cutters like this, they all have these uh, blue colored uh, lasers uh, they're like, what, 450 nanometers? Staying safe from the lasers. No lasers getting my eyes. We did about 26 passes. It almost made it through here. A weird thing is, when it only moved in the X direction, it didn't cut through. Um, this one's about a five watt laser. The one we had that was about twice as expensive was the Atom Stack X7 Pro. But this one has a 10 watt laser uh, inside of it. Um, it's a slightly bigger bed area, uh, but really they're both kind of about uh, the same size that they can cut. Uh, the main things that we've looked at this, the setup was, uh, it was decently easy. It wasn't that complicated. The instruction manuals had some things uh, that it would be cool to uh, have a little more straightforward um, or if they just came with it. But you can look them up online. That wasn't too difficult uh, to do it. And what, we put this together in maybe 40 minutes, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, and then it took some, we weren't used to this kind of workflow. There's no actual homing uh, for these. The, the laser itself doesn't know where it actually is in the bed. Everything's relative to where you start it. So when you first turn it on, it tries to home. And you gotta unplug it so it doesn't just run into the edge. And then you can manually set a relative home for it um, and just have it kind of start going from there. Uh, the main thing is that these blue lasers, they behave a lot differently than uh, if people who are used to like big industrial infrared laser cutters. And so Jose can probably talk to us a bit about the different materials that we've tried. So you see, it was just doing this MDF. We we're going pretty slow, but oh, it actually cut that out pretty wow. beautifully. So that was nice. That was gorgeous. Cool. So that was really clean, nice cuts right there. Um, it etches really well on most materials. But probably the main thing that you'll notice with these type of laser cutters is that things that are very reflective or white colored, they're not going to cut almost sometimes at all. We had what, white acrylic? Yeah, white acrylic, well, we did like 15 passes and it literally didn't even like etch it or anything, nothing. Uh, so yeah, we ended yeah. up putting like a layer on top of it. Uh, yeah, we tried taking some of the white acrylic and like, you know, if there's a small layer of something 
darker colored on top of it, it could kind of burn through that and get about halfway through, but it's not really, you could etch it, you could etch it that way, uh, but you're not really gonna cut through it. We had some orange acrylic. Um, that took what, like 20? 10 passes. 10 passes. With one with this oh yeah, this one about 20 passes or something? Yeah, something like 20 passes. Yeah, so with the Ferro Laser 2, about 20 passes uh, to cut all the way through that. The really nice thing about them is they, they etch, in general, like a charm. So they etch quite well. Uh, the resolution was pretty nice. Um, can't really complain about that. It was speedy, it was yep. pretty fast. So if you need something lightweight and quickly assemblable somewhere, uh, it seems pretty good for that, especially if you're just mostly etching things into stuff. Uh, if you're gonna do lightweight cutting, or what we're probably gonna do with the students a lot here is create designs that you will then cut partially with the laser cutter and then you can finish with hand tools. Um, you know, uh, other kinds of bandsaw like things or whatever, uh, and just get the rest of the design out for things that are just gonna take way, way too long to cut out. But yeah, in general, anything else? No, I think they're pretty good machines, especially if you're on a budget and- Totally. Resolution, again, I think pretty good. Yeah, uh, I mean, this one, I think they're selling for like two to three hundred dollars or something like that. So as compared to, you know, like the cheapest big industrial laser cutter you're gonna find is like 6K, 10K, something like that for some decent, of course, up to like, you know, 50, 100K. Um, and then this one was around $600, the Atom Stack X7 Pro. Uh, and it seemed to work pretty much the same way the other one worked. Um, it does, does it do any kind of homing or anything like that? Yeah, this one does have okay. uh, some homing uh, sensors in here okay. that make it way easier. Um, yeah. yeah. But other than that, yeah, they're all made out of this aluminum uh, 2020 uh, channeling. Uh, it seems nice, it's quite sturdy. It's again, lightweight. It would be nice if it had sensors on there to automatically home. It does have an optional thing where you can add an air assist, like a compressor, uh, to while you're, you're uh, cutting stuff. I think that would help a lot. We had to add our own ventilation system. All these machines get really smelly. You see we even have the windows open, but this whole room is, is getting quite uh, smoky without a, a true ventilation system. And so this thing's helping out a whole lot. There's the, the Alfaro Laser 2. Thanks a bunch for sending it to us. Our students will hopefully do a bunch of cool projects out here in the jungle with it. Thanks. Here's the inside as soon as we opened it. It's pretty well organized. It's got safety glasses even, little user manual, everything. Pretty well packed, seems pretty safe uh, when it was in there, yeah. The laser also came with this extra mystery box. It looks like it's like, I don't know, sample materials that you can cut with or something. There's like, some thin like plywood, some fabrics. They're all the same size. This is like leather, different types of leather. Yeah, I'm guessing this is just like a sample materials pack. Some MDF, another piece of wood. What are these? Ooh, some hunks of metal. Maybe that's supposed to be like your like laser surface. I think so, yeah. Okay, that takes the place of like the honeycomb or something. All right. So yeah, so this is the, the new one from Ferro Laser. This was a different other brand, Atom Stack, that's also kind of a little desktop laser. And so how's it kind of similar and different so far? Yeah, so this one travels not on top like this one, but on the sides. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it kind of slides there. The belt already comes built in, different to this one where you have to put it and then it's a little bit risky because like, if you tie it too much then it's a problem, if you tie it too little it's also a problem. Um, yeah, this one looks cool. Nice. Yeah, let's see how it goes together. And yeah, we have our other one that we can compare and contrast it with as well.
So you can see the specs of the laser, it's focal length 50 millimeters. Its maximum output is about five milliwatts. And so um, that I think is also kind of the limit that you can get them in the US. I don't know technically if Panama or Costa Rica has any rules about um, laser beam power, like generic lasers. Um, but yeah, I've seen five milliwatts. So yeah, so I guess this is, this is a five, 5 5.5 watt laser. I misspoke. Um, yeah. So it comes with a um, manual for putting things together. It doesn't seem the most useful thing. It gives you all the parts and then it just has be safe while using it. And then mostly it just has uh, QR codes to get the whole actual user manual. It'd be nice to have it just actually printed. And then the rest of the manual is just the same thing in other languages. Um, so looks like we're gonna have to download the manual to figure out how to build it. This is the back for this one. In the item stack, it also comes with a back like this one, but every little back has like step one, step two, step three. So you know, like for example, yeah, like, um, this little, Nods are for a specific step, and then ah. this one's are for like another thing, and so uh -huh. on. Uh, well, in here is, I'm just not really sure what are they for. <laughs> okay, so hopefully it's organized like that. <laughs> on here and then the laser part this hex key I think is slightly too small for some of these oh no that's okay I'll let you keep using that this is mostly just for review purposes that this hex key is not great <laughs> Grounding. Should this go under this or in there? I think it should go under the washer. Okay. I think. It depends. Well, then it might bump it up. Let me check the diagram. Okay, getting the little X motor hooked up. Hook up. The laser wire as well. Okay, got the laser installed. The shield was already pre-installed for us. It just pops on there, I guess. Getting along. So we got to the part where it looks like we have a whole like laser cutter gantry. The laser cutter's on there. All the electronics seem to be plugged in. But there's still a bunch of extra parts. Like this looks like it's for like an air assist, but it doesn't say anything about that in the man in the assembly manual. Maybe there's another assembly manual. There's some other things. I think this is just more zip ties and stuff. But this is intriguing as to what these things are supposed to be here for. Um, some extra parts. Um, so okay. yeah, more there investigation. There's a bunch of available ports. Huh. I don't know why. Okay, Jose, tell us what we're up to now. Okay, so I'm gonna try to connect this to laser GRBL. Laser Gerbil. Let's see. Huh. So we're plugged in. Hey! Oh. That seems. Ah, I'm gonna unplug it. Okay. <laughs> 
not good. So how does it know when it reaches the end? Because <laughs> there's no switches. And it seemed like it was having a problem there. Let's try again. We'll put it all the way over this way. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's not like it reconnected. It's blinking. Okay. I don't know if it should be blinking. I, I press it for five seconds. Okay, it's choosing the COM port. Okay, and yeah, I'll fail. Two is too ready. Cool. Now, the weird thing is that this should be available so I can move the Yeah, address. so you could home it or... So that's Oops. not available. This is the home in that is available. Okay. The other one will go and because of the sensors will automatically stop. So let's, let's try see. it. Okay, there's one. <laughs> oh, it doesn't like that. No. Okay. So maybe let's look yeah. at the manual and see if they have something about how to home this. <laughs> Okay, so we have it connected to a free trial of Lightburn now. And we figured out you just have to manually scoot it to where you want it to go. Yeah. And then you set that as the origin. So now scoot it away, Jose. And, and then I bet if we hit the home button, it'll go right back there where we set the origin. Nope. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Okay, we're not burning yet, but we did figure out how to reconfigure the light burn settings uh, so that we had to change it so that it's the user origin. The default was like absolute coordinates or something like that. Um, oh, let's make our first burn say like Watusa or something. <laughs> or Danta. <laughs> Okay, we're getting closer. We actually loaded up some material. We put in the measure for the focal length, tightening it in place now. We're gonna do a very simple design. It's a circle that says Watusa in it. We set our own custom speed and engraving for cutting and our vector um, so that should be positioned. Okay, I'm gonna frame it just to see it. Okay, frame it up. That seems pretty good. I'm gonna scoot this over a little. Okay, frame it again. That seems pretty good. Yeah. Okay, shall we do it? Start. Start. Oh, we should get our safety glasses on. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, save the glass for me, don't actually need to put them on the camera, but this is what it would look like, green, <laughs> okay, go for it, I'm ready to pull the power if everything goes terribly. Yeah, continue anyway, okay kind of cool looking. It's going pretty fast. Okay. Yeah, we're going pretty fast, but it's cutting the Watusa pretty clearly. Resolution's pretty decent. Yeah, I think next time we might just do like full power. If you want, can you adjust the power on the fly? Ah, oh, well, it's almost over anyway. Okay, and there's the vector cut. Can you set the number of passes as well? Yeah, I set that one for three passes. Uh, okay, cool. So, there's the results.
Um, it definitely did not go through, but you could tell it was really focused. That laser line is really thin and nice. Um, the text looks good. So at a minimum, it's a decent engraver. Um, this is just a little thin piece of MDF. Uh, it's interesting, it went up to that corner now yeah. after it finished, even though we set this as the user origin. I wonder if we can... I think it's this thing. Oh, the finish position. Yeah. Weird. I didn't even know that was like an option. Okay. Okay, let's try... Let's do... Let's go slower okay. and do 10 passes for the cutting. Okay, we're gonna try to do a second pass and see if it can cut directly over the circle with the word Watusa in it, but at different power settings. So there it goes rastering again. Again, this is nice and, and pretty fast for just the raster engraving. We tripled the power. So you can see the power of the engraving is going much darker now. Sure, let's use a, we have our own air assist. Well, it's more of a ventilation than like a compressor. Nice. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna try to do 10 passes at a slower speed and see if we can make any progress on cutting this MDF. So there it goes, it's a bit slower there, nice. Again, a nice thin kerf, it seems. It seems like we're pretty decently focused with just the quick focus on the, the pin. I'm not too sure this is gonna actually get through. Well, I'm starting to see a little light. Kind of deep in there. Maybe it'll go through. I'm just gonna tap it. I don't think that's through at all. Nah. I think we're gonna have to go like way slower Maybe. uh uh oh it's doing the raster really slow now let me stop it huh maybe it has like a overflow yeah like you can't 12,000 goes back to like 100 maybe try 9,000 We tried pushing how fast it can. Okay, so there we go, 9,000's going. It's changed its origin, but it's okay. I'm just gonna scoot it slightly up here. Or maybe I'll just go up here, there we go. So there's a new test starting halfway through, going really fast with the word Watusa and seeing if we still get the nice quality of the raster before. It seems still pretty pretty precise. There's not much uh, drag. Now it's doing the cut at a much slower speed. This is supposed to make it all the way through. It's looking a lot more promising than when we were going really fast. Makes a nice low rumbling sound. <laughs> How's that looking? My pinky finger feels like it's kind of, kind of deep there. Let's scoot our fan closer. So how's it comparing with the other desktop laser cutter you brought out so far? Um, kind of difficult to compare because 
the other software is less controllable as this one. This one is Okay, and you haven't used the other software uh, in this one. But the, uh, the, the other one has like already some presets where like it was just easier uh -huh. to cut things. Well, in this one we have to like kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more controllable, which I think is better. Okay. Uh, it's just a matter of having the right presets. Mm -hmm. But does, uh, can you tell anything about like the laser quality? Does it seem stronger or weaker or, uh, or too early to tell? In terms of finishing, it looks, I'll say, equally as good as the other one. Okay. Um, yeah. Just curious to see if it will cut. Uh huh. But yeah, no like blurry edges yeah. or anything, which is great. So now I think it's done one pass all the way around, right? Oh, is it burning now? It is burning. It is, it does seem to be going oh, shit. Yeah, it is a little. There we go. I, I just vacuumed it up a little bit and put out the fire. Yeah, but the wood is getting burned. Yeah, it's really. I wonder why it's charring on this round. Like the first round, it you didn't. It already cut, and then maybe is the metal underneath reflecting it. No, that's weird. It's almost like it went out of focus or something. But yeah, you can stop it, and we can check it out real quick. But two passes instead of one. Okay. Another cutting test. Okay, so now it went to a different look. Okay, is it going up and left? Okay, it is. So now it's going twice as fast as before and hopefully not catching things on fire. And it's going to pass over this side here, so without touching it, we can see how far it's made it through. Okay, there it's just on the metal surface, not going to cut through that. suction in there. Cool, it's back on the wood. And while that's happening, can you s It looks like we made it pretty deep through there. So hopefully it made it more than halfway through, so then the second pass should just completely free it up. So far it hasn't caused any little fires or singes that much. Having a better, a true air assist, I think, would really help. This is going okay. Yeah, this one is kind of far in the Hop back on that wood. So in theory, it should be totally cut through right there. Okay, it moved to its finished position. I'm gonna hold this down. Do you wanna do the honors and try to touch it? See if it just rotates perfectly? Nope. No, dang it. Doesn't even pop out. No, not really. Urgh. So let's see how deep it did cut through this. So it looks like it did make it through just uh, you know a couple uneven spots. So possibly a third pass could have taken it out. I can probably pop it out. There we go. And there's a couple. Maybe Okay, our cutting test continues. We tried setting the speed to something like 150, because previously it was at 100 and then 200, 
But at 150, it just sat there and just started burning a big hole and wouldn't move. So maybe it needs multiples of 100 to go. So we're doing three passes at 300 millimeters per minute, right? Cool. That's looking promising again. Yeah, mostly this seems like it'll be a decent little engraver and maybe cut through some things. If you're out at a field station like us, this is going to be your main option. <laughs> Okay, so we got the files and settings a little more tweaked. We can set it to 250 millimeters per second, but for some reason not 150. But this seems to be going okay. And this is almost the last pass, right? Can we see that edge looks decently cut through there? The kerf is still pretty small, even after three passes. You want to do the do the honors, Jose? Does it move? Can you pop it? Yeah, but it. Probably was my fault because I move it here. Oh, that's true. We're missing this part cut. Okay, so, so that part's cut, there. but that's not okay. Yeah, you're right. So that cut through all the way there. Okay. 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 Oh, and this is our still our like nine thousand. Yeah. Okay. Is it getting through that paper good? Oh, but I can't sell. So this is our first acrylic test. Supposedly wrote Watusa there. And now, I'm gonna get this guy. Suck up. It looks, oh shit, I shifted it a little bit. But it actually looks like it's cutting somewhat deep. Or yeah, basically missing a pass there because I scooted it but we'll see how it goes. Wow, I scooted it a lot. <laughs> I thought I only scooted it a little bit. All right, some more tweaking, and it looks like we're able to etch the acrylic. Now we're gonna try, oh yeah, that definitely got into the acrylic. Now we try, we try defocusing the laser so that it's actually targeting kind of the middle of the material. Since it's a much weaker laser than like a big industrial laser cutter, hopefully this will mean that our kerf's gonna be bigger, but that we can get all the way through the material. Laser in, laser in. Okay, so another acrylic test. The etching turned out quite nice. That looks all really good. I'm worried you didn't get all the way through the acrylic. That was 10 passes at 300. That did not get through, unfortunately. Let's see, did it get close? No, I can't even feel it on this side. So it looks like it made it, I don't know, half to three quarters of the way through, through 10 passes, but yeah. Definitely a good etching machine. Um, they also say that some of this lighter colored acrylic is more difficult. Um, 
I wonder what if we try cutting it from this side where we have an opaque background, you know? Okay. Yeah. Let's try it. Okay. We but at other angles, it cut through completely. So that was just weird. Some figuring out to do here. The specific size and everything, then go for this one. Uh, okay, so that said, let's try this one first. Lasers! Woo -hoo! It's a laser party. Okay, alright, so, well, in here we have, same as in someone said, like the material that is already used, and better if you use it as well. Um, if you need more material in the dirty lab, we have all the material that we have in here. And there are also some mirror acrylic, which is super cool. Yeah, this one's very good. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, like, is the thickness what is important. Oh, like on the bag, though. Yeah. yeah on the bag, like, um, like, okay. Masking tapes in the dirty room. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, in the meantime, I'm like filming it here, so it uh, looks like it's taking on up here. Alright, so let me show you this one. Here we're using the laser to name the different labs. This is the messy lab. <laughs> I'm mean, cutting quite good in just this uh, jungle stuff we found. <laughs> 